Houston, Aquarius. Go ahead, Aquarius. Okay, uh, this path, the uh, moon came into view at the top part of the LMP window, came across higher. Uh, Jim estimates the LPD angle at a minus one five degrees. Okay, minus one five on the moon, and uh, sounds like it's set up pretty well. Everybody's happy with it down there? Aquarius, it's a little too early to tell uh, exactly how the PTC is going. We'd like to get a few more points, so keep reading them off. And uh, we're still looking for that uh, super crit to go anytime. Okay. Skipper, 14 degrees. Thank you. This is Apollo Control at 107 hours, uh, 59 minutes. Uh, that report on the uh, relative positions of the uh, Earth and Moon through the uh, spacecraft windows coming from Jim Lovell. That's the first time we've heard from Lovell uh, recently. Uh, a check with the flight surgeon. Uh, we... As far as we know at this time, all three crewmen are still up. However, the fact that uh, Lovell is now on watch uh, might indicate that uh, Jack Swigert and uh, Fred Hayes are uh, planning to begin a rest period. In mission control, uh, Flight Director Milt Wendler has been discussing the uh, situation with the supercritical helium tank and what options we've got. If the uh, burst disk does not uh, rupture as it's expected, it will. And as we mentioned before, uh, at that time it appeared the options were either to vent the uh, supercritical or vent the uh, pressure from the supercritical helium tank uh, in a series of small vents, or to vent it all at once. Uh, after looking at the situation, it's been decided that uh, the procedure, should it be necessary, uh, to relieve the pressure by venting. Uh, would be to vent it all at once. In this event, the, uh, it is felt that uh, the fuel in the fuel heat exchanger would be frozen and uh, we would not be able to thaw it out again. This would render the descent propulsion system unusable for uh, further, further maneuvers. However, we have uh, adequate consumables in the uh, LEM ascent stage adequate uh, propulsion in the ascent stage. It's also felt that uh, if a subsequent mid-course was needed, uh, probably closer into the uh, earth entry, uh, we would be able to uh, perform this mid-course using the ascent propulsion stage of the lunar module. The present uh, pressure on the supercritical helium tank, as read from telemetry data here in mission control, is 1900 13 pounds per square inch. The uh, rise rate has slowed down somewhat. Uh, the uh, re recapping again, the uh, predicted range for the burst disk rupture is between 1,881 pounds per square inch and 1,970 pounds per square inch. Uh, we wouldn't begin to get concerned about the pressures on the supercritical helium tank until it got up around 2,000 pounds per square inch. And uh, the LEM control officer anticipates that we would not get up around the 2,000 pounds per square inch in the event the burst disk does not rupture until about 114 or 115 hours ground elapsed time. The experience that we've had with ground tests uh, on the supercritical helium burst disk indicates that it uh, uh, should be rupturing around the pressure we've got now uh, in the low 1900s and we're continuing to watch that the uh, LEM power
power is continuing to run as it has since power down uh, between 10 and 12 amps and will look very good in that respect. There's also been no change in the status of any of the other consumables aboard the spacecraft. They all continue to look, uh, look quite good at this time. Apollo 13 is presently 144,958 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed now of 4,613 feet per second. And we're now 34 hours, 37 minutes until Earth entry. At 108 hours, 4 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. discussing that uh, now, Jim, and it uh, looks like we're going to wait on the track, and uh, for the time being, uh, since you're in the corridor, why, there's no need to uh, pass it up, but uh, we're going to keep looking at the track, and then we'll probably come up with one. Right, I'm not too sure what uh, the Benny is going to do to us, or what this uh, sea tank uh, ruptures, uh, what it's going to do for us. Roger, uh, we don't presently expect the sheet tank to have any effect on your trajectory, and the uh, pressure's up to 1921 now. Hey, it's a lot better than we ever expected. What a way to get a data point. And James, this thing, you thought you were going to sleep through all your watches. Say again, Jim. I said you thought you were going to sleep through all your watches. Well, you keep waking me up. Sorry about that. This is Apollo Control at 108 hours, 52 minutes. The flight dynamics officer uh, hopes to have a uh, preliminary set of numbers on the effects of the mid-course correction. 
uh, at about 109 hours 30 minutes or a little over uh, 37 minutes from now the burn was targeted to uh, give the spacecraft uh, a flight path angle of minus 6.52 degrees at entry interface uh, we won't have a uh, confirmation of this of course until uh, the flight dynamics officer is able to complete the tracking and uh, compilation of data and uh, come up with some preliminary numbers but the, uh, the targeted value of that uh, mid course was to give us a flight path angle of uh, minus 6.52 degrees uh, the entry corridor the uh, which is the width of uh, flight path angle uh, that we feel we can uh, withstand is about minus 5.25 degrees to about minus 7.4 degrees uh, of flight path angle. We're still watching the supercritical helium pressure aboard the LEM uh, descent stage increase gradually. Uh, the pressure is now reading 1,937 pounds per square inch. I would like to uh, cover again the procedures which we mentioned have been worked out in the event that the burst disk does not rupture as it is expected to do. Uh, the burst disk of course is in there to relieve pressure on the tank on the uh, uh, supercritical helium tank when the pressure gets above uh, certain specified limits the disc is designed to rupture uh, between 1,881 pounds per square inch and 1,970 pounds per square inch. Uh, in the event the uh, disc does not rupture, uh, Flight Director Milton Wendler and his flight controllers have worked out a uh, procedure that would be followed to relieve the pressure uh, on the tank. And uh, we see the pressure dropping at this time. The control officer uh, reports that the burst disc uh, has ruptured. We just, uh, as we were making this announcement. Anything? Yeah, Jack, I was just about ready to call you. Underneath quad four, I noticed a lot of sparklies uh, going out. Did you hear or feel anything? Well, I sure can, but uh, I think it changed our uh, it changed our, our uh, PCC. Let me check it through the drifters. Okay, she's going down through 600 now. I think we're probably going to have to reestablish PCC. Yeah, we got a pretty fast uh, yaw distance, Jack. About him right now. Did you say it yawed some? Yeah, I was in a right yaw, and now I'm in a left yaw. At a much faster rate than uh, the one you put in the UTV. Yeah, I okay, Jim, uh, we're talking it over. Stand by. to resume between the Capcom and uh, Jim Lovell aboard Aquarius. Uh, we'll resummarize the situation as we were talking about uh, the procedure that would be followed in the event the burst disc did not rupture. 
uh, lo and behold, the disc ruptured. Uh, that occurred at a pressure of about uh, 1,937 pounds per square inch at uh, about 108 hours, 54 minutes, 40 seconds ground elapsed time. Uh, we saw the... Okay, Jim, it's going through uh, 125 pounds now. And we understood you to say that okay. it uh, reversed your yaw. Is that affirmative? I uh, sure did, Jack. I reversed my yaw completely and put it in a little pitch, I think. But more than anything, I reversed my yaw. Roger, uh, have you effectively established uh, PTC in the opposite direction then? Well, uh, you can say that. I, uh, I'm not too sure just what kind of pitch and roll I got coupled with for you all. I just saw the years go by the LMP's window here uh, not too long ago at a rather faster rate than we had going to the direction. Telecom uh, cycling back and forth. Is uh, that what they call a non propulsive vent? Right, I'd hate to see a propulsive one. Yeah, me both. It's going through 50 pounds now, so uh, are you seeing uh, fewer sparklies? from you on that. Well, we're in no, uh, no trouble up here as far as, uh, as, far as the uh, uh, yaw goes. Everything's fine. It's faster than we had set up before. Just as long as we get the proper thermal uh, constraints and, uh, and of course, it's the biggest 50 minutes to get the pressures up anyway. Okay, Skipper, uh, we don't uh, we don't see any thermal problems as a result of uh, this change. If we see some communications problems, we may have to uh, do something different, but uh, so far so good. And uh, we'd kind of like to hear from you on uh, LPD numbers uh, if you get anything going by the window.
Okay, Jack, uh, the Earth just went through at an LPD of 26 degrees. Okay, the Earth went through at 26 degrees, uh, going the opposite direction this time, uh, left to right, is that right? Uh, from left to right, that's the primitive. Of course, the only other thing that uh, we'd be concerned about is uh, what change in your velocity this might have had or what delta V it imparted, and uh, we'll have to uh, look at that for a while before we are able to determine it. And uh, if there is no significant change, why uh, we prefer just to leave it the way it is. Okay, Jack, uh, we're going to get a time on uh, a revolution here, and uh, maybe that'll help you out. Right, and uh, for your information, the uh, tank went at uh, 1,937. But 1,937? Right. Say again the time and the, uh, also the LPD number here in the background noise, Jack. Okay, okay, Jack. Uh, LPD that time was 62 degrees. That was for two revolutions. Uh, being as I missed it, we missed the Earth that, uh, the time before we didn't see it. And the time was three minutes and five zero seconds. Okay, uh, three minutes and 50 seconds. Is that uh, rate uncomfortable for you? Uh, Jack, Tim said it isn't uncomfortable. It's uh, a little annoying uh, for the Omni pushing, uh, and also uh, because it's kind of uh, maybe a Earth Moon relationship kind of Okay, Jack, uh, we've got a master alarm and we've got a battery uh, light flickering. 
Okay, uh, copy of battery light. What battery? Aquarius, how about a second on the uh, power temp monitor? Find out which battery it is, please. Okay, Fred, I can hear you now. Say again, please. Okay, it's the same old, uh, same old one. Uh, the only light I get uh, is on the back two. Okay, Fred, uh, we copy the uh, copy same old friend battery two. Uh, can you give us high bit rate for a while, please? Aquarius Houston, high bit rate, please. How you getting it now, Jack? We got it. Our instrumentation and communications officer uh, reports we have high bit rate now. We're taking a look at the battery uh, here in Mission Control to uh, uh, see if we see anything unusual. Uh, Battery two earlier in the uh, earlier yesterday uh, caused a master alarm to go off. We took a look at it at the time and uh, could see nothing uh, wrong with it. The battery was put back on the line, and uh, at the time it was uh, I felt that the problem was a sensor problem uh, rather than a problem with the battery itself. Okay, Aquarius, uh, you can go low bit rate power amp off and uh, down voice backup now. Uh, voltages and currents look normal on battery two, so uh, we'll ignore the uh, battery light. Okay, Jack, uh, power amp off, uh, back to low bit rate. I'll uh, go back to sleep. Uh, the battery light staying on. We got a steady on uh, bat two, bat fault light, and the uh, battery caution light. Okay, and uh, is a skipper in the sack now? Uh, say again. Is the skipper in the sack now? Since the antenna switching is kind of annoying, uh, we've talked him into buying uh, only uh, half of the data. If uh, it gets too troublesome for you to switch antennas, why well, you just leave it on one antenna and we'll uh, listen to you half of the time. Okay, it's not really much trouble. That's all we're doing about. We'll try to keep up with it. And you're satisfied with this attitude so far. Huh? I guess you're going to watch the thermal and find out whether. We have to go to some other PTC attitude. Roger, uh, thermal appears to be no problem. Uh, we're looking at uh, what Delta V might have been imparted due to this, and uh, it uh, looks like we're not going to change the PTC attitude. Okay, there's a Delta V imparted. I hope it raised that angle a little bit. We'll be looking at the data here and uh, give you a better answer in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. 
soon, but uh, three minutes, so we may lose uplink for 30 seconds or a minute. Okay. This is Apollo Control at 109 hours, 27 minutes. Capcom Jack Lausma was advising Jim Lovell that uh, we'll be handing over uh, from the tracking site at uh, Goldstone, California to the Honeysuckle Australia site in about three minutes. Uh, during this handover for a period of about uh, 30 seconds to a minute, uh, we will not be able to uplink to the spacecraft. At about uh, 109 hours, uh, 13 minutes, uh, the crew reported a master alarm and a battery light flickering. We had them turn up the, uh, turn on the power amplifier and uh, give us high bitrate data so that we can look at the batteries here on the ground. Uh, after a, uh, a look at them, the Telemu, the uh, LAM electrical systems engineer in mission control, said that he was confident the problem was the same one that we'd seen uh, yesterday, in which uh, we apparently have a sensor problem uh, rather than a problem with the battery itself and uh, the sensor is triggering the alarm. Uh, the crew was advised to put the battery back online and, uh, and leave it there. The uh, supercritical helium burst disk ruptured at about 108 hours, 54 minutes, 40 seconds uh, after reaching a pressure of 1,937 pounds per square inch. Uh, Lovell reported at the time seeing particles coming off uh, and also the uh, pressure of the escaping gas, which was thought ahead of time to be a, it was predicted to be a non-propulsive vent, turned out to be uh, very much a propulsive vent. Uh, Lovell said that the uh, spacecraft stack, which had been rotating long about its longitudinal axis at a rate of about... Uh, three revolutions per hour. Uh, this rotational rate was stopped by the vent and uh, started up again in the opposite direction. And it is now uh, rotating about one revolution every uh, two minutes. One revolution a little less than uh, every two minutes as compared with a revolution every 18 or 19 minutes in the opposite direction prior to the vent. Uh, so the vent was uh, very much a propulsive vent. Uh, hence the remarks from Lovell back to the drawing board on uh, non-propulsive vents. Uh, the crew uh, asked if there was any problem with the rotational rate they had as far as the structure of the vehicle and uh, the temperatures on board. Uh, after a review of this situation in the SPAN engineering room, uh, it was reported that there would be no problem either with vehicle temperatures or structure uh, leaving this rotational rate as it is, and uh, we've advised the crew to, to let it uh, continue to rotate at that rate. Uh, the only problem might be in switching from one antenna to the other. Uh, this, of course, is uh, a function. Houston, we're handed over. How do you read? That's a lot better, and uh, we figure your battery glitch was just that uh, thermal switch that triggered the melt, the caution and warning, just uh, cycled once and triggered the master alarm again. We'll watch the uh, batteries for you since you don't have any caution and warning on them now. Okay, appreciate that.
Well, this is Mission Control. Uh, as we were saying, the only problem we, potential problem we could see with the uh, rapid rotation rate or the more rapid rotation rate of one uh, revolution every two minutes uh, might be that uh, the crew would have to switch from one antenna to the next, and uh, it was felt that this might be troublesome. However, level reported that uh, would be no problem, and they would uh, attempt to keep up with it in the event that uh, they miss an antenna switch, we would uh, lose data for perhaps uh, one minute while the uh, spacecraft rotated around into position uh, for the other antenna to be received on the ground. At the present time, Apollo 13 is 140,934 nautical miles from the Earth. Our velocity is up now to 4,700 feet per second. The very gradual velocity buildup we've been seeing since crossing the sphere of influence line, the imaginary line at which the Earth's gravitational force becomes the dominant uh, gravity force acting on the spacecraft, and uh, we begin to see at that point a gradual acceleration due to Earth's gravity. Okay, Jim, uh, your luck is holding. Uh, tracking uh, shows that your entry angle has uh, gone up to minus 6.24. This is on the basis of all the data we collected between the mid-course up to the time the sheet tank went. So we'll uh, continue to look at it and uh, see if the sheet tank did anything to it at all. So it's uh, the data has uh, gone from 5.9 to minus 6.24. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. We're really good in there. Jack in the sack, or is he with you? Oh, uh, Jack and uh, Fred are both trying to sleep. It's rather humorous. Uh, Fred's sleeping station now is in the tunnel upside down with his head resting on the asset. Jack's on the floor of the left. But the restraint system wrapped around his arm to keep it down there. Say, Jack's on the floor and uh, Fred's with his head on the ass in it. That's why I was his feet up into the tunnel. This is Apollo Control at 110 hours, two minutes. Uh, that was Jim Lovell reporting at... Uh, Fred Hayes is sleeping at the present time uh, in a rather unusual position. Fred uh, sleeping with his feet up into the uh, docking tunnel and his head resting on the uh, ascent engine cover, which is on the floor of the limb, uh, relatively upside down, uh, as viewed uh, in the normal standing position in the limb and Jack Swigert sleeping on the floor of the LEM. Uh, this is Apollo Control at uh, 110 hours, 8 minutes. Uh, we estimate that the amount of uh, velocity change imparted to the uh, combined stack of vehicles uh, by the uh, disc rupture in the uh, supercritical helium tank was about two tenths of a foot per second. Uh, this amount of velocity or delta V addition to the spacecraft was able to uh, stop the rotational rates in one direction and start them up in another. Uh, the rotational rate had been about uh, one revolution every 18 or 19 minutes. Really hanging in there. Your water's good at 161 hours now. Hey, 
That sounds great. Jack Lausman just advised Jim Lovell that uh, our current estimates of uh, water would indicate that he's got, uh, the crew has uh, sufficient water on the LEM for 161 hours. For command module water. Okay. Uh, Jack, I'd just like to know what uh, what plans or thoughts are being uh, contemplated for the positions of the ops when they were going to uh, use their uh, LOIH scanners or take the devices back on the command module with us. So uh, just what uh, is the plan? Yeah, we're uh, talking all that over now, and we haven't decided. Okay. Uh, Jack Lausman was advising uh, Lovell that we have, as I said before, about 161 hours of water on the LEM as, uh, ascent uh, and descent stage uh, based on current consumption rates. And this does not include water, uh, which we have available in the command and service module or in the uh, uh, portable life support systems, which would extend that margin somewhat uh, beyond the 161 hours. And for some 45 minutes or so, a uh, fairly sizable group, uh, about a dozen people or so, have been gathered around the flight director's console discussing the procedures to be followed during re-entry. Uh, Lovell just asked Jack Lausma what uh, procedure was being planned for uh, the oxygen purge systems, the emergency oxygen supply carried uh, with the backpack and uh, lithium hydroxide canisters uh, available on these. Lausma uh, told him that we haven't uh, reached a conclusion on that. The meeting going on around the flight director's console at this time is involved with that sort of thing, as well as uh, what procedures to, to be followed as far as jettisoning the, jettisoning the LEM and uh, service modules, uh, all of these things being considered and uh, discussed. At the present time, Apollo 13 is uh, 139,164 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,745 feet per second. I'd also like to uh, clarify again the uh, situation with respect to the supercritical helium tank and uh, the burst disk, uh, which ruptured at about uh, 180 hours. Uh, when the pressure got up to some 1,937 pounds per square inch. Uh, this burst disk is in the uh, tank for the express purpose of keeping pressures from going above levels which the tank can withstand. Uh, had the disk failed to rupture, we had a backup procedure worked out whereby the tank would be vented manually. Uh, of course, it was not necessary to put this backup procedure into effect because the disk uh, ruptured at about the level that was expected that it would. Uh, with the uh, uh, burst disk rupturing, uh, what we have effectively lost is the ability to resupply pressure to the tanks as this pressure is drained off by burning the descent propulsion system engine. However, we do have what is called blowdown capability in the engine. Uh, that's the pressurization that already exists and which is not lost by uh, depressurizing the supercritical helium tank. This, uh, the pressure that is in the propellant tanks remains there. It's isolated from the, uh, the supercritical helium tank and is not lost when the burst disk ruptures. Uh, with this pressurization, we still have some 800 feet per second of delta V remaining and usable in the descent propulsion system engine. smooth over in Timber Cove, Jim. Uh, that sounds pretty good. How about it on Rago? Same, everything smooth there, too. Good.
the gym, we've had a lot of people uh, working on the entry procedures, and they'll be continuing to do so. Uh, we got a few ideas we'd like to toss at you so you can start thinking about them uh, if you think you're in a position to uh, discuss them without waking up the other guys. What do you think? Yeah, go ahead. It's okay. Okay, uh, one of the first things we want to do is uh, charge the uh, battery to CSM so we can get some limb power over there to do that and we have procedures ginned up to do it. In regards to the re-entry, we're planning our uh, last mid-course at five hours before entry interface. And uh, if we have to make one, that is. And then we'd like to jettison the service module at four hours and a half, roughly, uh, before entry interface. And take the next uh, three to three and a half hours for taking pictures, bringing up the momentum onto g and uh, taking care of stowage and uh, other odds and ends. And we'd hang under the limb until one hour before entry interface. And then we'd jettison that. And uh, these procedures are going to be run integrated in the CMS and LMS tomorrow morning, and uh, hopefully later in the day uh, we'll do it again with uh, mission control on the loop. A couple of uh, other things we'd like to toss at you. One question is what do we do with the OPS? The thought is that there is adequate O2 in the uh, command module, and that uh, the OPS represents a high pressure source and a stowage problem. And uh, people are thinking about uh, leaving them in the land. The other thing is that uh, we think you might want to make this a suited entry, suiting up prior uh, to land jettison, because uh, what we're doing is when we jettison the land. We're going to do it like we did uh, in Apollo 10, uh, just let the beauty go. And uh, if we weren't suited, well, we'd be betting on the uh, hatch seal to take care of us. So I just thought we'd uh, toss a few of these ideas at you. Uh, some of them are ones that are particularly uh, pertinent questions at this time. procedures will work, be worked out precisely and uh, we agree that the stowage and uh, all of those uh, peripheral details ought to be taken care of before the mid-course.
we were thinking. I guess the two things uh, are which uh, are uh, somewhat unresolved at the moment are what to do with the OPS and uh, what to do about the suited entry. Uh, we thought we'd toss those at you to see what you thought about them. Okay, as far as the OPS is concerned, uh, if uh, we have enough uh, Jim, I'm sorry, uh, we're not catching what you're saying. Uh, the comm is getting kind of bad right now. Okay, uh, back on your now. I've still got you with quite a bit of background noise, but if you talk up like that, I think we can hear you. Okay, my only concern about the uh, and or the flip is the the and the Sounds like the general gist of your uh, uh, comments are that if uh, things uh, remain pretty much as they are now in a command module, you just soon leave the OPS in the limb. Is that a firm? Uh, that's okay, and maybe you'd like to uh, think over the suited entry bit a little while. subject that's been getting a lot of attention and uh, let me see if I can get some uh, uh, general ideas on that at the moment. procedure for bringing the uh, command module G and N up. Uh, it's the presently proposed one. Uh, we may come up with a better one, but here's what we're looking at right now. First thing we plan to do is to, uh, using the LEM coas, sight on the earth with the, with the LEM, just as we did in the mid-course. Then we'll do a body axis align, 400 plus 5 on the eggs to put the eggs ball at zero, zero, zero. 
And uh, then we can give you an eggs ball attitude to fly to to point the CSM optics at the moon. And uh, if you can see stars, why uh, we can use those too. Then we can uh, give you an equivalent set of CDU angles to put into now 20 and to torque the platform over. So now we're course aligned. Then we'll do a final line by shooting at the moon and then at the sun. You follow all that? Let's uh, talk it over a second. We'll tell you what to do. Uh, Jim, is the battery light kind of flickering? sensor on battery two is uh, kind of cycling back and forth and uh, every time it does it triggers a master alarm Jim. Okay, same old problem. Huh? Yeah. And uh, Jim, finally on the P-52, uh, we're considering using the, mo and the moon and then the sun for the final line. Okay, the moon and the sun for the final line. Copy your uh, last question due to background noise. Okay, once uh, once uh, you get the uh, bag ball aligned by the first and 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 the first we can tell you what attitude on the eggs ball to fly to in order to point the CSM optics at the moon or at some star. And then we can uh, 
knowing where the optics are pointed, give you an equivalent set of uh, CDU angles to uh, uh, put in now and 20 to torque the platform. Okay, okay. That's the uh, current thinking. Uh, it may change between now and uh, tomorrow, but right now that's the way it looks, Jim. It'll probably be some takeoff on that anyway. Okay, and are they uh, putting on a uh, GNN entry or uh, using other things like uh, GNN or something like that? It'll be a GNN entry. How am I going first class? Yeah, that'll be a switch, won't it? Have you broken into the uh, food locker in the lamb yet? Uh, that's the farm check. I sure have. I see that mail a lot. Uh, you say you didn't find everything in order in there, huh? Yep, there it is. Great. Okay, I'll pass it. about that earlier. 